Hey everybody, welcome to part two of the uh, George Thomas Universal uh, Pillar Tool Project. I kind of staged that. I had just finished grinding the uh, table with my little angle grinder and I thought, you know, be good to talk about safety a little bit. So as you could see, I had earplugs in, I have safety goggles on. These are safety glasses, bifocal safety glasses, and I also had a, a shield on. So you can't take safety too seriously. Everybody knows that, but you know, I, I wanted to reinforce that message, especially with something like an angle grinder. Um, if you've ever used one, if you haven't, if you've used it, you know that they have a, a little a weird gyroscoping tendency. So be extra careful. Put the little handle on there. You know, make sure you have a firm grip with both hands, and um, be careful when you're using it. They do a fantastic job. Um, let me show you this. This is the table casting. Man, it's still hot. But there was a, a big sprue blob on here that I just ground that all the way down. The rest of it was really pretty clean, so I just had to take some little nubs off. And I could have done that with a file, but it's a, a lot easier and faster to do it with the angle grinder. So this way, there'll still be a little bit of an, 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 an interrupted cut when I do this in the lathe. Uh, probably tomorrow, but um, at least it's fairly cleaned up and the angle grinder did a nice job. So that's going to go back here in the four jaw chuck so it can get mounted. Uh, I wanted to show a couple of things that I didn't talk about yesterday. After I filmed part one, I went ahead and cut the pillar, which is a 7 8 inch diameter precision ground mild steel. Actually, what I ended up using was drill rod, and I got it from eBay in the U.S. There's a supplier that they go by Zorro on eBay, and it's actually the Granger um, company. So that's what I used for the pillar. It's just a 15 inch, inch length of, of 7 8 inch drill rod, and then this part is reduced down to 3 quarters of an inch. And it's critical that that, that be exactly 3 quarters of an inch. I'll tell you why in a second. So, as you can see, I've got my micrometer set to three quarters of an inch, and it fits just perfectly. So, a little snug in some places, but just just right. It's just, just right at three quarters of an inch. So, um, the reason it needs to be three quarters of an inch is the pillar base gets bored to three quarters of an inch, and the, the bottom of the pillar will be sitting in here um, an inch and a half down. And... There's also the the uh, little base. I, don't, I forget the exact name of this thing, but the the uh, the base for the the table is made out of three quarter inch drill rod. It's reduced down to eleven sixteenths. This little shoulder here, which will be uh, Loctited with green Loctite inside the the table from the bottom, and it's bored through three eighths of an inch, and it has a um, seven sixteenths inch clearance down three quarters of an inch. This is actually, this is 11 sixteenths of an inch, this um, this shoulder, the outer diameter of this shoulder. So, but the point is, this is made out of three, three quarter inch drill rod, and sometimes you might want to set the base inside, or the table inside the base. So that's why it's, it's important that these two be the exact same outside diameter. So as, let me make sure I've got my, oh, glad I checked. That would have thrown me for a loop. So setting that right at three quarters of an inch as well. And of course that measures properly for the three quarter inch drill rod. So make sure when you make these two parts that you make them the same outer diameter. Um, let's see. Yep, just like that. Voila. So that one's a little snug. I might sandpaper that down a wee bit, but um, better, better that than too loose. But important dimension for that. Um, oh, one other thing, a couple other things I wanted to show. I showed resources. Mark, thank you for your nice comments. I love to see your projects um, on your channel. Um, I made, um, I had years ago, I'd actually made this uh, binder for this project. I started collecting notes and um, I want to show something interesting from the Metal Web News. Um, I actually made a, a made my first ball handle back in 2005 if you can see the date on there that um, first successful ball handle it's when I first got into metalworking about 15 years ago 
Um, and so that these are drawings that came from the Ron Chernich website. And what I did was I made other drawings for my own purpose about the corn ball handles and other ball handles and devices that you need to make them. I took uh, pictures off the web and put them in the plastic here of the accessories for the pillar tool. And I printed out, this is what the Ron Chernich website looks like. Remember I, in uh, part one I mentioned Google GHT UPT. Um, this is what the, the uh, website looks like if you want to go there and print out these resources for yourself or just use that as a guide when you're building yours. So, um, handy resource to have. Um, as Mark noted, you know, it, it, it's never a bad idea to, to prepare for your project. Castings are not cheap and, um, you know, to me, it makes it fun when you get to plan it out and machine it just right and it comes out right. And it doesn't always come out perfectly, but it's in a, a nice uh, rewarding part of the hobby when you do that. So I hope that's helpful to you. Um, so the, the um, uh, precision ground couple of pieces are, are made. I think the next thing I'll work on is the actual table itself. And I've got a, a, a plan for the machining, turning this in the lathe. And I will show that next time. So thanks again, everybody. I hope this is enjoyable and useful to you. Please make comments, leave notes, and I'd love to hear feedback about it and tell your friends. So thanks. I'll keep you posted.